guys. Hello. Welcome to the live. Feels so weird. I haven't done this. Hi, Nina. <laughs> oh, yeah. So do you feel a bit uh, shaky yeah, or nervous? a little nervous. I brought, like, <laughs> tea because I was like, we might be here for a while. So, yeah. I see. How have you been? Good. It's been three years since the last time I miss I saw right? you in person. Yeah, it goes by so quickly. I can't believe like it's already been three years. Um, but things have been really mm -hmm. well. I've um, gone back to school now, so I'm just very dedicated with that now, and that takes up most of my time. So yeah, <laughs> how have you been? Good. It's still lockdown. Um, I mean, our situation are. We're doing okay. I'm doing okay. Uh, it's back to normal for me when it comes to work because my line of family business is in the real estate and the hardware industry. Uh, so uh, that it's one of those essential products. Like booming, right? Yeah, those products that we sell are still considered essential. So yeah, yeah so I'm back to normal. <laughs> I'm back to normal now when it comes to work. What about you? How's the COVID situation there in Australia? Yeah, well, um, I mean, we haven't been in lockdown as long as Philippines. So, I, you know, my heart goes out to all the fans in the Philippines. It must be so hard right now. Um, but luckily here in Australia, like our restrictions are easing. So things are sort of going back to normal now. Um, but yeah, it's been a very difficult period. It's, it's been such a like love hate relationship for me. Like, you know, it's so hard to stay at home all the time and be motivated to like take care of myself, work out and and like study, but at the same time I understand the importance of it and protecting like my family, me and like the elderly people in our community. So yeah. Is that what has been apart from school, it it does it is it also one of those things that have been keeping you busy since winning, since almost winning the title three years yeah. ago? Yeah. Um, well, if I'm not like studying, I'm in the Philippines a lot. So I don't know if you've seen my posts and stuff, but I travel back to the Philippines like twice a year now. Um, and it's mostly to travel to work and to do more like charity work there in the Philippines. My um my family have i think it's called panata or like a a promise like every time we go back panata. to the oh, okay. is that the right way of pronouncing it panata yeah panata yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so Correct. every time we go go back we always try to do some sort of charity work um you know handing out goods or food or um we did the bamboo plantation there in the Philippines. So um, yeah, I've just been busy doing that stuff in the Philippines and doing school at the same time. I see. Wow, you've been doing a lot of things since almost win title uh, three years ago. As we all know, the whole world is on pause literally right because of what's mm. happening because of the mm. pandemic okay how has it affected your life so far yeah well i mean as like being restricted to just your home like it's hard when you you have things to do um but you know mentally it's very like challenging i'm sure a lot of people are going through the same things of going a little stir crazy at home um but it's all about the small like successes and wins throughout your day. So whether it's, you know, I worked out today or um, I was able to meditate today or read this book, like it's all about the small little wins um, that really get you through quarantine or lockdown and all of that. Um, but yeah, I've just been trying to focus more on that and not beat myself up too much. You know, you see a lot of people on instagram baking a lot and working out a lot and you can always feel like oh you know i'm not doing enough i'm not being productive but yeah it's it's a very challenging time for everyone so don't be too hard on yourself um and 
just focus on like the little wins, I think. And we're all going through the same thing. So just support one another, be kind to each other. I see, I'm curious, um, I see. Um, are you still in school right now? I mean, or school is also on hold because of what's going on? No, yeah, so we're doing, school has um, moved fully online. And right now I'm like in the middle of exam period. So that has also been really like keeping me busy recently. Um, but yeah, everything's online now. So school go still goes on. Um, I know that a lot of the high school kids now um, are returning back to school on campus, but for people like me in university and college and stuff like that, it's still all online for us, yeah. Does that feel like homeschooling? <laughs> a little, yeah, it does. It's, it's just so hard to stay disciplined as well when you don't have, you know, your lecturer there in front of you or your teachers in front of you and stuff. So um, you really have to learn self-discipline. I have to like always put my phone away from me when I'm studying. That's yeah, hard to just like avoid social media right now. Yeah. Okay, so what's it? what has it been like studying from home? Like do you, do you get to do a lot of breaks in between because you know you have the f more time more free time to do yeah. it on your own pace yeah i guess you get that freedom and flexibility of like going on your own schedule on your own terms um yeah it really does um motivate me to like go outdoors more i've got my dog with me so um I try to take as many breaks as I can throughout the day to just like get off from the computer and be out, get some fresh air. Um, I've loved that part of it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely still been quite challenging to do it all online and to be disciplined enough, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. see. By the way, um, I, saw, I saw a live feed from Miss Earth Australia here on Facebook recently, they had a charity drive. Yes, yeah. About about something to do with COVID-19. Were you part of it? Because I kind of did not see you there. Yeah, so that was um because the Miss Earth organization, they're in um, Sydney. So I'm in Melbourne. I'm based here in Melbourne. Um, I wasn't able to attend, but um, I've heard so many successful stories from it. It's um, about Miss Earth Australia, um broadening their outreach programs to those that need it the most and in particular it's the international students that are struggling in australia so um they've chosen to donate like um vouchers money um and ready to eat food as well for them and supplies just little things to help get them through this really difficult time so i really commend them on their actions and their their efforts i wish I was able to be a part of it, but yeah, it's too far for me to travel and we're all in lockdown. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's about just, you know, um, doing the things that you can in your own community or at home to help others. Yeah. Let me see. I did a little research about you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> You're also working. You're also working. <laughs> Yeah. You're a working student there. So yeah, you're that? like, you're all, you're also a working student there. Is, yes. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So um, busy with like my part time work on the side, um, as well as being a full time student. So it is pretty full on at times, but um, it's just yeah how you do it, how you get through it. But I've been lucky enough to keep my job. Um, where I'm working at the moment during like COVID. So that's been really good. But otherwise, yeah, it's just studying and working a lot of the times for me. What course are you taking up in, in school right now? And how long will you still finish it? Yeah, so I'm taking up osteopathy. And I know it's a very weird, like not a lot of people have heard about it. Um, people think it's just about the bones, but we actually learn about 
the musculoskeletal system and we do like manual therapy like we can treat like a physiotherapist or a chiro um, and provide like musculoskeletal relief to people um, and prescribe exercises and stuff like that so it's a pretty full-on course um, there's so much like theory to learn and then there's the practical component learning you know how to manipulate muscles and bones and whatnot um, and it's a five-year course so I'm in second year now so I've got three more years to go so yeah Wow, you're so yeah. <laughs> you're on your way to becoming a professional, a, me a medical, professional medical professional in the near future. Yes. Don't you think your course is kind of? Don't you think your course is kind of um, relevant? <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. Like health. I mean, is always everything what's important. going on right now. Yeah, health is so important. Mm -hmm. I mean, like we can't really help with the whole COVID situation. Um, I will say that, but, you know, just your general health and looking after, you know, I know a lot of people working from home now and they're getting a lot more like back pain and all of that as um, a consequence of that. So that's sort of where we come into it. We can help with, um, you know, muscle pains or bone issues and stuff like that. So, yeah, I guess it's it's always going to be relevant, like any kind of health profession will always be relevant. Like our health is so important. That and while mopping the floor <laughs> yeah. with, a, with a crown on your head at the same time, right? Yeah, the cleaning. <laughs> The girl, the girl with a crown, <laughs> with a mop, have you, have with a mop on her your on one. <laughs> no, not yet, not no? yet. No, okay. not yet. You oh, should. When I, you yeah, better when should I when you come over here. <laughs> <laughs> when I graduate, I can come over and treat you and everything like that. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Thank you, thank you so much in advance. All right, <laughs> let's now go to your Miss Earth journey, your Miss mm -hmm. Earth experience while you were here in the Philippines. Um, in, Nina, we remember you doing so well in the Miss Earth competition three years ago. What are your fondest memories of the pageant? Um, I think just the experiences with the girls um, and there was one really memorable moment when um, I think there were four other contestants with me and we traveled to Iloilo and we got to actually plant some mango trees there. Um, and it was just such a like exciting experience, like to learn more about the Philippines, the people. Um, and um, I just remember the whole experience, like we were in this little hut thing on top of the river when we were learning about why it's so important in coastal um, communities to have these plants and then i put on these big like gum boots and we kind of went into the river and planted it and mm. it was just yeah such an such a fun experience um and to see that you know this pageant really does promote change in the community and for our environment. Um, it's just, that was my fondest memory of, yeah, the pageant. Do you still get in touch with your fellow contestants? I'm yeah, I mean, um, it's been so long, like three years. Um, I definitely like would one day, maybe post like COVID, want to travel to New Zealand and see Miss New Zealand again. Um, she was like my roommate as well during the pageant. So, you know, she's not too far away. So maybe soon I can um, go visit her. Um, yeah. You know, I've been meaning, I've been meaning to ask this question ever since I met you three years ago. Mm -hmm. You were a former Mutian ng Pilipinas title holder, a, mit, a former Miss Philippines title holder before joining Miss Earth. Why did you suddenly shift joining to Miss Earth? Mm. Um, I guess like when I first joined 
um, Mutia, I was so fresh in the pageantry scene. I didn't really know a lot about it. Um, and, you know, it was a really, such a big like learning experience for me. And post like Mutia, um, there was always the thought of like maybe joining another pageant. But the reason why Miss Earth really caught my eye was like the advocacy, you know, it's, it's so different to all the other pageants that are around. And there was just this huge like calling for me to join Miss Earth um, because I'm, my family, like in our own little ways, have always cared about the environment and done our own things at home. So it just felt like it was the right thing to do. And I wanted to make it out for a worthy cause. Um, and so when I saw it, I just thought I have to join this one. Um, to bring change within my own community. And it's been so like rewarding to see people around me change um, in a good way because of it. I've seen like my family and extended family get on board. They supported me through the whole thing. Um, I've got one of my titas now. She's She started selling like old vintage designer bags because she told me she was inspired by, you know, my Miss Earth journey and and wanting to like contribute and recycle and reuse like old goods instead of using new like resources and stuff like that. So I think that has been such a rewarding part of it is seeing the change within my own close circle of friends and family um, because it's for such a worthy cause. I see. You know, I remember you being part of the group one of your batch of that yeah. particular edition <laughs> years ago. Um, it was such, for me, it was such a competitive group because you had Venezuela, Netherlands, Thailand, Czech mm -hmm. Republic mm -hmm. in that group. So I, how were you able to hold your own against them? Mm -hmm. It was it's definitely, all yeah, like it was so hard because, you know, especially like Miss Thailand and Venezuela, I remember them being like crowd favorites um, and, you know, it's difficult to like not get as much recognition as those other girls from countries that are so, that do so well in pageants. I mean, Australia, we do. We do well, but like we've never really won. We did, we did have like Miss Universe, um, Jennifer Hawkins, but before that, like we haven't really seen Australia much in the pageants. Um, so coming in through as like the underdog was a very challenging experience. But I think what was so great about it, what I learned was the power of just like believing in yourself and you know, despite not getting that recognition, it's just you being in your own competition um, and doing the best that you can every day um, and just not worry about all the other noise and criticism that happens along, this, along the way about other countries. Um, it's just about believing in yourself um, and obviously like enjoying the experience as well. So I made a point to like, also enjoy it to have fun to make memorable um experiences with my fellow candidates and everything like that and i miss them so much that it was so fun and such hard work and challenging but it was so rewarding at the same time um so that yeah when it came to coronation night i was just focused i guess on myself and just doing the best that i can for my supporters and my family that have done so much. They traveled all the way to the Philippines to watch me perform. So it was really just about doing my country proud and my family proud and myself and supporters. Your, your, laser, your laser beam focus is really admirable, <laughs> I must say. Yeah. yeah, for you to be able to, you know, do that, despite the competition, despite being surrounded by heavy favorites during the competition, you were still able to do it. So 
how I mean yeah. how what really what do you think really pushed you to the limit that that made you say okay I can do this despite the odds despite everything I'm seeing right now I may not have the biggest fan base but I will survive this <laughs> where did you get that strength to go on I mean I guess a lot of it you know really came down to my family um and the support that they gave me they were always my mom was there for the whole month long pageant every she was staying at the same hotel so every morning every day she'd text me you know to just do your best and that's something like my family has always instilled into me is just do your best and the rest will will fall in place so that was really like my focal point for me was just do my best it is what it is people are gonna like me or they're not but you know the real competition is you know striving and and doing the best for yourself and putting your best foot forward um and yeah i guess like along the way i had to learn um to be confident in myself as well so that's one of the things i really treasured about the whole experience was that believing in yourself and having that confidence to, despite all the odds, you know, to just do what you can. And that really helped me focus on the night. Like when it came to coronation night, I was just like, you know, just blocked out all the other noise in my head and everything. And I just said, just have fun out there, do the best that you can. And that's like all you can do. Um, and yeah, I think that just really sort of showed on stage and got me to where, where I place and everything like that. So for me, like, that's one of the, the best parts of the competition was that journey and discovery of self-love and, 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 yeah, confidence. Because at wow. the end of the day, Before like, we proceed. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay, go on, you were saying. <laughs> no, yeah, like at the end of the day, like, um, you know, it, it just comes down to coronation night and how well you perform under the pressure and how well you perform, even though, you know, a lot of people didn't like put me in the top 10 or whatever. And that's fine because, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinions, but just being able to perform under pressure is what is going to get you to the crown or get you to win at the final stage so th that for me like yeah just got me through the whole experience and I just really switched on a uh, like coronation night and I just thought this is a once in a lifetime opportunity so just give it your all nice attitude you've got mm. By the way, we before we proceed, can can I just uh, greet all the all our followers watching you right now, watching our interview? Frederick Carpio Labaton is watching. Thank you, Sir Labaton. Um, Curson Angeles, I, I believe she's your aunt. Yes. <laughs> can I volunteer as patient in Australia? <laughs> hi, Tita. Then, yeah, hi, Tita. How are you over there? Then Zani from Malaysia is saying hi. Hi. Tess Mendoza is also greeting you. Um, she says, keep safe and stay beautiful inside and out. Um, your tita Corazon Angeles is asking you, what social media do you generally use to post? To post? Um, definitely yeah. like Instagram nowadays. Um, I mean, I don't right now just with like exams i'm not really on it too much but um yeah definitely instagram is my go-to platform um where i like to advocate like the charities that we do and everything and ways that we can help um the environment everything like that so i feel like yeah that's where most of my fans and followers tend to be as well on instagram so i think it's just the people of this generation now just like prefer Instagram. So yeah, that's my favorite. You can find me on underscore Nina Robertson, by the way, guys. 
Yeah, Nina Robert. Underscore Nina, no, underscore. How, how can you say your Instagram handle? Yeah, so Nina Robertson, one word. Mm -hmm. Underscore Nina Robertson. Okay, you guys can guys check her out mm -hmm. over there. At Nina, at underscore Nina Robertson, one word. Robertson, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you winning a gold medal during the preliminary swimsuit competition in one of those pre-pageant activities of the pageant. Mm -hmm. Did you feel when you won that award? Did you did you think that you were already one of the favorites then? No, I mean, like it was still definitely a little win, like a triumph, obviously, to win that title. Uh, sorry, that medal, but. Um, you know, I think like it did sort of generate a bit more um, like like attention from like pageant like pages and stuff like that. I did, I think, get a little bit more recognition from it, but definitely not as much as still like the powerhouse like countries like Philippines and, and Venezuela and Thailand and all of that. So it was still like a really nice win and it was actually on my birthday as well would have been my 20th birthday um so it just made it even more memorable and special for me mm. right, were, wow. you at, were you at that event i remember it was no i was uh, during during the meet and greet for the bloggers in one of those yeah. function rooms in in what hotel was that? Joy Nostal. Oh, Joy Nostal. Remember yeah. that. But mm -hmm. our photographers were the ones who were covering you guys in all those pre pageant activities, both here in Manila and yeah. in the provinces, nearby provinces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm uh, how have you been? What sort of training did you do prior to competing in Miss Earth? Um, I did a lot of like at home training, I guess, like my mom is a huge pageant fan. So I think it's really like engraved in like the Filipino culture as well. So I had my mom training me a lot of the times. Um, we would like have little debates. I remember like like three, four months before I was entering and stuff, we'd have little debates on like environmental topics and stuff like that. So already we were starting to generate like the the facts and, and all of that for the Q&A and everything like that. And then before, um, like a week before the pageant actually started, I did a little bit of training with KF. So I did training with them during Mutya as well. So I was already familiar with them and they welcomed me into the camp and they're just so generous. Um, and they, you know, did the little final touches, I guess, um, before I entered, before I officially entered the competition. Mm, I see. So uh, what, apart from that, what kind of train, because I'm curious to ask, I'm curious to ask because you represented Australia in the pageant. And I know yeah, you said that you joined a booth camp of KF before a week before uh, officially competing for Miss Earth. But what, um, apart from your home training there in Australia, what other sort of training were you also doing in preparation for the pageant? Because I'm curious to ask because you represented Australia. So I would just like yeah. to, I'm interested to hear. I mean, How it's very different here in Australia because I mean in the Philippines you have the beauty camps um, and and everyone joins and they train you and groom you for to be um, a beauty queen and whatnot um, but for me I guess it was just reaching out to um, people involved in the Miss Earth organization that helped me like build my portfolio my content um, they trained me um, in what to say what you know what to wear and everything like that um and you know the physical training as well that goes into being a beauty queen as well um i had to put a lot of work into that so you know being on a healthy diet um working out as often as i could um but for me yeah i think a lot of it was 
because like miss earth it's such a intellectual like pageant like you really have to know your facts um you really have to know about the environment and advocate for your cause so um for me it was that was a lot of my preparation was getting ready for a q a and being a leader um and to talk about my advocacy um and then all the little final touches just sort of came at the end and even during the pageant as well i was still practicing almost every night like my walk um, my poses and everything like that so it was a very it was an ongoing process it didn't just sort of like happen a month before the pageant it was months in preparation and then also during the pageant because um you really also get a good taste of like the competition as well so you can see what's out there um and then sort of also come up with your own techniques and stuff like that while you're like throughout the pageant too i see wow <laughs> um what has been the best part of your miss earth journey or your reign mm -hmm. during um, that journey. best part gee there's so many i think I, I was really lucky in the sense that um, like the Miss Earth International was in the Philippines. So for me, um, it was a really beautiful moment to just like go to the Philippines, learn more about my culture as well, and to bring my little Australian culture along with me as well. Um, but it was just, I loved traveling around the Philippines, meeting the locals there. Um, you know, eating the yummy food there. And but at the same time, being on a mission to like advocate for Mother Earth, um, for a cleaner environment, that was really special. And to do it with such amazing girls, um, the fellow beauty queens that I was with, just, it was such a fun um, moment. And you really get inspired by the other girls, like the work that they've done in their own respective countries for the environment was very inspiring for me and to learn all the different stories as well was was so special i see you really enjoyed the whole competition yeah, for over a month. <laughs> yeah I like i was so lucky i got to go to like ilo ilo and stuff like that like i've never been there before um and just to learn more about the filipino culture was like an amazing experience on its own already yeah and then to do it with amazing girls as well it was just it was pretty fun <laughs> how were you able to sustain that kind of energy all throughout because it's I, a month long <laughs> right? yeah it's like a good and bad thing like it's bad in the sense that like every day you are waking up 3 4 a.m to get glammed up and ready for the day and you know you probably like the night before are up till midnight at events and stuff like that um but just like i said like being with the girls just made it so fun you really build like a sisterhood between the fellow Bella, uh, beauty queens and whatnot so um that definitely made it way more bearable and tolerable to do like a month-long pageant because it's it's seriously like a marathon <laughs> like when you mm -hmm. think you're at your ends and you're like oh no i can't do another day of this it's so tiring and oh blah you just you get through it day by day and it's with the fun and the the love that you experience with the other girls as well that sustains you through the whole pageant Let's see uh how do you feel that uh you're one of the two beauty queens who competed in miss earth australia who really extremely did well in the competition the first one was diana Granera, was that her name back in 2015 she also placed miss miss she also placed second just like you yeah so so how do you feel? Do you think uh, Australian girls with Asian heritage tend to do well in Miss Earth? Or do you think it's just a coincidence? Um, 
I think there's so many factors to it um, that definitely for me, like my own experience, um, having that Asian heritage and part of the culture is, well, particularly for Filipinos, is to join beauty pageants. You know, like it dates back to the Spanish era when they would have, you know, they'd pick out all the good-looking women and they'd do the procession and fiesta and all of that. So for me, there was such there was such a big cultural drive and influence to join Miss Earth. Um, and I'm sure like many other Asian heritages as well, um, that might be a big thing in their culture too. I can see why that, why there's more and more beauty queens like that entering, but I think ultimately, you know, doing well in the pageant really just comes down. Um, it really comes down to the work that you put in, the training and the time and the effort and speaking true to the advocacy that um, for joining Miss Earth. So um, I can see why there's like a trend, like maybe it's it's becoming more of a thing. I think for me, there was a big cultural drive, but yeah, the ones doing well, is just the girls that are actually putting in the effort and the work. Do you really think a girl has to have a genuine environmental advocacy to do well in Miss Earth? Definitely. I mean, like, this is not like every other pageant, you know. This is so unique and different. Um, and every year we stick to our theme, which is, you know, conserving our planet Earth and everything like that. So um, you really have to be true to the advocacy. Um, and I think that will really show on in your performance, you know, like the passion, the drive, the time, the work that you put in is not just for the crown, but it's for the meaning behind it, the platform that it gives you. Um, so I think, you know, what really sets girls apart in this in this competition are the ones that are very passionate about the cause. Let me see, yeah. So nowadays, you really got to represent or be able to speak something in order mm -hmm. for you to be noticed in a pageant like Miss Earth. So you think beauty alone won't cut it? Definitely not. No, no. I think even like the, I think a couple of days before Coronation Night, the Miss Earth International broke down the, the scoring and everything. And so much of it came from you being able to advocate the cause and how well you did in your Q&A and everything like that versus how beautiful you looked on the outside. So just the pageant is set up to, for girls that are very passionate to win. So that it's, it's part of the, the scoring system of Miss Earth. It's definitely... It's more like brains to like beauty. Mm, yeah, they're always looking for the for a well-rounded candidate. No, yeah. I asked you earlier. I asked you earlier the best part of your Miss Earth journey. So I want to ask you now, what has been the hardest part? If there's one. If... Yeah, <laughs> I mean, definitely. Like as you mentioned before, being the underdog, like. Coming, representing Australia and not getting all that as much recognition as a lot of other, other countries was very challenging. Um, I, I, for me, that was like the hardest part, um, but it was the most rewarding part of it as well because along the process, I really learned to believe in myself, to gain the self-confidence, um, to carry on and to just do the best that I can, despite, you know, everything going around and the criticism and, and, and the favorites and stuff like that. Yeah. Many see Miss Earth 